Uh, thank you, Les and Corla. I want to say, first of all, on the record of the House, that there's nobody in this, no party in this House that has a monopoly on wisdom or, or people's experiences that, that, has a, that has the sole view of how people are suffering. Everybody in this chamber knows the terrible state that, people, that the country is in and the, the, the difficult circumstances that people are in in their everyday lives. But let's get in Corla, every discussion in this country, be it on television, on radio, in the media, or on news bulletins, talks about the debt crisis in Europe, the slowing down the world economy, the deficit crisis in this country where we're borrowing 44 million euro a day, or the implications and ramifications of the EU IMF bailout that we're in every single day. Yet I listened to the five speeches from Sinn Féin yesterday, and they didn't mention once either of those topics. The very basic political scenario and economic scenario this country is in was ignored from their tax repeal bill. The circumstances that I outlined are directing and impacting on this country, and they're dictating decisions that have to be made and that have to be done to try and balance our books. They're not popular, they're not easy, but they have to be done. The five deputies, Deputy Stanley, Deputy O'Quaylon, Deputy McLaughlin, Deputy Colreevy, Deputy MacDonald, took no time to mention any of these issues when they came in here to lecture us on taxation policy and economic policy. I want to quote from Deputy Stanley yesterday. He said, politics is about making the right decision, not the easy one, and improving the quality of life for ordinary persons on low and mil middle incomes. Trading on empty truths does not pay bills, create jobs, or strengthen communities. This is from Sinn Féin, who 16 months ago ran an election campaign saying that we didn't need the EU IMF deal, that we could survive on our own, go home, we'll survive, we can look after it. We have the pension reserve fund, which will fund us, I don't know how many times they've spent it this time. They must have spent it about six times over in the last 16 months. They wanted to default, but they wanted to borrow. They didn't need to want, they didn't want to, they wanted to let the banks collapse, but they wanted lending to flow. Uh, they had every kind of economic fantasy that was populist and worked. The truth is that there is no credibility in economic policies. There's no substance to it, uh, except short-term political gain. The second thing that Deputy Stanley said, and he was quite, uh, along with his other colleagues, quite lecturing to the, to, the, to, the, to the point. To the Labour backbenchers, I say the following. The public who elected them are sick to the teeth of hearing that things will be worse. It could not be worse for families, he said. Well, I'll tell you this, and this is my own personal view as a Labour backbencher. I personally do not believe that a Fine Gael government on its own, and this is because we are separate parties with separate ideologies in a coalition, a Fine Gael government on its own, in my view, would not have reversed the minimum wage cut. Uh, I've talked to the deputies, I've talked to people, there was definite consternation one minute, about one it. One minute, deputy. A Fine Gael government on its own, in my view, <laughs> would not have removed 330,000 people from the universal social charge. If you look at the speeches on the record of the Dáil, uh, they, they tell you that. A Fine Gael government, in my view, on its own, would not have reinstated the legislation to protect people on the JLCs. I think the Minister's comments on that were, were, were quite clear. And I really do not believe that a Fine Gael government would have protected the basic rates of social welfare. That is, that is a fact. And I would, rather, I would rather be honest with people and have achieved something in government, have having had an input into a programme for government in the most difficult time that this country is in, than be a cynical shower who sit on the opposition benches taking cheap shot after cheap shot with no economic substance, with no thought out policies, I will go back to the people at the next election, uh, Las Cay Corla, and I will go back with a record of delivery, not a record of rhetoric, and exploiting people's fears, and exploiting people's difficult circumstances at one of the most testing times in the history of this state.